Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. Welcome to Hurricane Preparedness Week, where this week we are going to have several videos going over what you can expect during the hurricane season. In today's video, we're going to determine your risk. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So hurricane season goes from June 1st to November 30th, officially in the Atlantic hurricane season, May 15th to November 30th in the Eastern Pacific. And today is the beginning of Hurricane Preparedness Week from NOAA. And part of the risk from hurricane season is due to the increasing population that has moved to the coastline since the 1970s, where we are now approaching 37% of the United States population along the, the Gulf Coast and the Atlantic Coast. And that's causing a whole bunch of different risk for people, not only in terms of their lives, but the damage that's caused by these hurricanes as people move to where these hurricanes and tropical storms actually make landfall. One of the biggest threats that we all know about and is talked about the most on TV is hurricane winds. A hurricane starts getting its name as a tropical storm at winds of 39 miles per hour and officially becomes a hurricane at 74 miles per hour and then is a major hurricane at 111 miles per hour as a category three. And all these winds are due to the circulation of the structure of the storm where we have these outer rain bands, this outflow top, uh, and it creates an eye in the middle where it's very clear. And then around that eye, we have those very strong hurricane force winds along the eye wall. And this is what it looks like when you see a radar image of a hurricane as it's making landfall in the United States or anywhere in the Caribbean. And you can see that structure. The blue in the middle is that eye where it's very calm. And then those reds and oranges right around it. That is that eye wall that has the maximum sustained winds of any typical tropical cyclone, storm, or hurricane. That same eye wall and the winds in the hurricane also cause what's called storm surge. This is probably the most devastating part of any hurricane because it takes the water from the ocean and then brings it onto land. And that's because of when you get to the coastline, these counterclockwise winds around a hurricane will force the wind and water into one direction. So the one that's facing the shoreline, the counterclockwise winds to the right half of the storm, will take the median sea level and if you have high tide on top of that, those large waves and winds will then push onto the land and bring the ocean pretty much to your back door. This is a map of the United States where we could see storm surge from any tropical cyclone. And pretty much everywhere along the coast, especially in those estuaries and where rivers uh, sink through, that is our most vulnerable areas, but flatlands like around Florida and Louisiana are most especially at risk. And here's a zoomed in look of what some of your storm surge could be in any particular hurricane. Each one will be different depending on how strong it is, how slow it's moving, how the direction it's coming from. But this is just an average of what people could see in the mid-Atlantic region around Long Island, North Carolina with the Cape Hatteras. You got Louisiana, which is at risk near New Orleans and losing of the, uh, the bayou. And then, of course, around Florida. Another risk from hurricanes is the formation of tornadoes. And that is also from those same rain bands that come in from a hurricane. What happens is the ocean is very flat. And when you get to land that causes an elevation a, uh, and what happens is that causes the wind speeds to change in direction as you move up in the atmosphere. So you have this circulation near the surface, you get onto land that causes lift and that circulation then can become a tornado. 
So here's an area, a map of the United States that's showing where all these tornadoes have caused damage in the, from any hurricane that's made landfall or tropical storm too. And you can see it, a lot of it is near the coast. Uh, if you look at the top left, that is F0 damage, EF0. Uh, and we see a lot of those tornadoes because those are the most common form. But you can see stronger ones too, F1, F2, 3. But they're more, especially F2 and 3, EF2 and 3, are less likely. And the EF0 is just the most more common because of the way the tornadoes form during a hurricane compared to severe weather season in like Tornado Alley. Now, one of the biggest threats that occur and people often forget about is inland flooding. And this is because we could have storms that move onto land, but then slow down and actually stall and just dump tons of rain because they are pretty much vacuums hurricanes. They suck up the ocean uh, through evaporation and then they just dump it on you in the form of rain. And in low-lying areas or poorly designed cities with very poor drainage, uh, you have these situations where inland flooding can creep up on you rather quickly. Um, and especially like from Hurricane Harvey in Houston. We saw it was sitting over there for days on end and it dumped 40, 50, 60 inches of rain in the metropolitan area. Last but not least, we have rip currents. Now, this is one of the easiest ones to avoid. Just don't go in the water during a hurricane, which would make sense. But you have people who like to take advantage of the waves uh, from hurricanes like surfers. And what happens is in a uh, rip current, you got the waves that are coming to the beach. They break. And between the two waves that have broke, you can have this current that sucks people out into the ocean. And sometimes you don't see it. Biggest thing you could do to avoid it, besides not going in the water, is if you're stuck in one, is to swim parallel to the coast. Because the current literally is just taking you out to sea. If you just swim per perpendicular, you'll get out of that current and then you can come back to the beach swimming away from it. So again, to just summarize, you if you're in a hurricane prone area, which is pretty much anywhere along the east coast of the United States and the Gulf of Mexico, you have these risks that you have to de make a determination of what you want to do to avoid them. You have storm surge, strong winds, tornadoes, inland flooding, and rip currents. All of them are avoidable, especially if you make an evacuation plan, and we'll have a video about that later this week. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button, leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.